Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how you can make uh, the conversion of uh, a Fisker Stay Sharp reel mower into a battery powered uh, Fiskars reel mower, which is what you see right here. So as you can see, uh, this mower is already fully assembled. I've been using this for the past few weeks and uh, it's been working quite well. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I'm going to disassemble it uh, because I want to change the spacers that I have in between these, uh, these wheels so they won't be as wobbly. And also I want to downsize this sprocket. So just for your information, and as you can see right there, uh, this sprocket that's, in, that's installed on the motor is a 20 teeth one and just visually you can tell it doesn't have much difference in terms of size from the one installed on the reel. Uh, the fact that it's a bit smaller it, it does give me a little bit of added torque which is really good but uh, because I'm, I'm only using this motor at 50% of its speed I, I will rather just put the smaller sprocket in have to increase the speed to 65-70%, it's gonna have enough speed on that reel and I'm gonna have much more torque which is gonna be really good when, uh, when going through thick grass. guys so uh, in this case I think I'm gonna try to use the wheels without any spacers because uh, no matter what I tried with uh, these washers and uh, different uh, polyurethane spacers that I have uh, the wheels all always seemed wobbly because they were pivoting just in the center uh, so because of that I decided to try with without any spacers so basically the wheels will just be sitting against one another and I tried to pivot the mower uh, just a little bit before to see uh, how it was working and uh, it seemed to be working just fine. So I'm going to try to put it back together like this and uh, then we'll make a test and see if it's running good. If, if, uh, if there's a problem later on, I can always add some spacers to that back cylinder. Okay, so now as you can see, I've put back practically all the screws uh, in place. I left these two open and that's because that's uh, where I connect the bracket that's gonna hold the, the, hen the engine. And um, I had to use some uh, longer screws in, in here, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. So this is the bracket that I use to mount uh, the motor onto the Fisker's mower. Uh, this is uh, just a regular type of bracket that you can get at any uh, big box store like a uh, Home Depot. And uh, in order to attach this to the motor itself, I use some L brackets combined with uh, a straight bracket. Uh, in order to attach it to the mower, all that I did was just uh, um, drill down some new holes in order to align with these two from uh, the Fisker's mower itself. So. Uh, so I wouldn't do uh, major modifications to the structure of the mower.
Okay, so uh, here's the motor already on the mower. I did have to take the cover off in order to be able to uh, bolt these screws from underneath. Uh, it made the job a lot easier. Um, so this is the sprocket, uh, the sprocket that I'm gonna putting gonna be putting on the the motor. Uh, this is gonna attach. It, it's gonna grab to the to the shaft with uh, these two uh, bolts. So it's basically just gonna be with uh, friction. As you can see, uh, this shaft doesn't have any um, keyed entry nor anything. Uh, so it's just gonna be adhering there with uh, some friction. Hey guys, so a small update to uh, the project here. Um, the sprocket that I originally had here uh, just being held with friction against the, the shaft uh, was not really wor working that well. And uh, I kept getting worried that uh, uh, you know it might start slipping or something with time. So I got this sprocket which will fit this, uh, this motor shaft just perfectly. It's a D-type sprocket and it fits the chain that comes with the mower perfectly fine i'm gonna add this one to the link as well so you can find it easily on uh, on amazon all right now it's time to uh, size this chain uh, because the sprocket is smaller so i'm gonna have to reduce the size of this and uh, first we're gonna start by uh, taking out this uh, this chain link if i can get this thing to focus there we go Let's get onto it. So, in order to size this, this chain, first we're gonna have to open it. And uh, to do that, we're gonna have to remove the link uh, first. So let me see if I can get this right on the first shot. I'm gonna try to pinch uh, this plier by holding on the top, uh, actually on the front of the pin, and then on the back end of this pin here so let's see if that works hopefully you can see it on camera okay there we go it's out all right and and we're free so the way you can uh, size a chain is uh, you put it around the two sprockets. Uh, in my case, I've put it around the uh, sprocket, the bigger one that's on the reel, and now around the one, the small one that's on the motor. And I'm gonna check for the fitting. And uh, you're gonna want to break the chain uh, on the link that you're gonna use to attach to uh to the one so basically you'll have a closed uh, circuit here so in my case it's going to be this one i'm going to take a sharpie and i'm going to mark the link that i want to break all right perfect now if you have a chain breaker that's amazing it's going to take you two seconds to uh, take this pin out and uh, basically you you just have to uh, reinsert the, the the link and you're uh, you're good to go in my case it will be a little bit more tricky I'm gonna get I'm gonna have to get creative So this chain now has been broken, uh, like I said, I had to get creative and uh, that's it, job done. Uh, so now all it takes is I'm going to place this pin back, complete the loop, always remember to put the connector back on like so, and finally the locking pin. Now for, to put the locking pin back in place. It's very simple. You can use the pliers again. And you'll basically just reverse what we did the first time around. Let me see if I can get this straight. Let's 
seems, seems we're in good shape. Okay, so now I'm going to replace the front wheels uh, with uh, the front cylinder that I made for the mower. The way I made the cylinder was by using a shaft just like this one. This is a 5 8 uh, shaft. And then on each end of the shaft I inserted um, a little spacer made of poly polyurethane, a shaft collar to hold everything in place, one on each side. And for the cylinder itself, these are uh, these are rollers for uh, a trailer used for boats and uh, basically you can find that on uh, boat stores or uh, some hardware stores might uh, might carry this as well. Keep in mind that in order to make a shaft like this fit uh, you're gonna have to uh, cut the inside of this uh, front support, uh, the original front support of the Fiskars mower and you're also going to have to uh, open these holes to, uh, in, in order to uh, enable for a 5.8 shaft uh, to go through. Uh, the reason why you want to uh, trim this bit of the front support is just so you can have a full rower to the side that will uh, basically follow the size of the reel, otherwise your rower would just go uh, to this um, inner side of the, the support and uh, your stripes would be a lot smaller than your area of, uh, of cut. So after you're done and everything is mounted in place, uh, what you want to do is Get a piece of paper, fold it in half, and uh, test your uh, cut uh, all across the width of the mower. And that's because when we're mounting the brackets here on the side, uh, we have to unscrew certain screws that play with the, the alignment of the reel. So we're going to test the cut just to make sure that everything is aligned perfectly. So let's go ahead. It's cutting well. Good. Good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now let's go ahead, get this more outside and give it a test. All right, so here is the first test after changing the back cylinder there. Um, as you can see with the roller back on, uh, you probably can tell on camera, but the cut is not as even as it was before. And that's because uh, uh, I overseeded a little bit on this area and uh, I had to let the grass grow a little bit too much. Uh, so of course, uh, real mowers are not very well known for uh, uh, being able to cut um, long grass like this, especially not with a front rower like that. 
if you put the wheels on the side like you saw at the beginning of this video uh, you'll see it will make a major difference and the cut will actually be uh, super clean now what this front rover will do for you is it will avoid a lot of scalping and it's also it's also going to help you in terms of uh, striping your lawn a little bit harder so as for the wheel mower's operation it's pretty straightforward you just increase the speed here and the motor will start spinning right away. This is just 50% speed. Also, the back cylinder, as you can see, it pivots really easily. It's super easy to turn, make any sharp turn, turns in on top of your one. And when you're done mowing, you simply come right back and you pull the battery out. That's it. So the motor is a 24 volt, 250 uh, watt um, uh, motor. Uh, it can go up to 2750 RPM. And as you could see, I just use it at about uh, 50 or 60% of its speed and it's more than plenty. Uh, the chain is a size 40 chain. I picked that size because it will be the same size as the sprockets that come originally with the Fiskars. I got this smaller uh, sprocket here. Uh, it's a 12 teeth uh, sprocket. Again, it's basically, uh, it, it will give you more torque and uh, you'll still have more than enough RPMs on, the, on that wheel. Uh, the added torque will help you with the, the motor not bogging down when you hit uh, thick patches of grass. Uh, the sprocket itself, it's a well-done sprocket uh, mounted on a well-done hub. Okay, so to power this motor, I'm using a system which consists of a 20 volt Black & Decker uh, battery, lithium battery. This is meant for a Black & Decker drill. So because I already have uh, one of that model, I already have the, the charger, so it's, uh, it's a little bit that you save right there. Um, I found on Amazon this dock that matches this uh, type of battery and the dock already comes with uh, the wires and whatnot to hook up everything so basically you'll just have to hook up the dock to the speed controller and the speed controller to the motor for the back cylinder I found these wheels uh, these are uh, just regular lawnmower wheels uh, they have uh, 8 inch uh, on, of width and uh, again you can just find them uh, basically everywhere any big box store will carry these and they cost about uh, eight nine dollars each for the front rollers I used uh, uh, a 5 uh, shaft with uh, two shaft collars one on each end and I just inserted uh, three spacers one on each side and one in the middle uh, I for the spacer, I just cut the little pieces of polyurethane pipe. And for the cylinder itself, I used the uh, uh, trailer uh, rollers. Uh, so uh, these are uh, rollers that are meant for trailers for boats. My helper just decided to show up. Hey, do you think it was a good job? No? Okay, you do it better next time. So guys, I think that this will be a, a good help uh, in case you're thinking about modifying your own Fisker's wheel mower. Uh, in case you dive into a project like this and, uh, uh, and there's something that I didn't cover, just let me know in the comments section and I'll help you as much as I can. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.